Hey everybody, it's your boy Stu. We're back up here at Frightmare Collectibles again with the legendary Tracy Swan. That's what y'all know her as. <laughs> uh, not that that's all she does, Ms. Leslie Dean. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good to be good to be up here. Nice that we can still get out and be social. Do some, do some stuff as fans, you know. <laughs> Even if we're, you know, we might break a couple of rules. I don't know. <laughs> Put your mask on. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> we're good. This is this is Texas. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry if that ruffles some feathers. Yeah, but we're, but we're we're comfortable here. We are. <laughs> we all. It's like it. We what what is it called? You know, when you are doing something with a partner and uh, you ask for their permission. What is it called? Oh my God, it's just falling out of my head. <laughs> you know, like when you have sex with somebody consensual. This mm -hmm. is a con consensual thing. Consensual. Okay. Yes. Yeah. My brain was drawing a complete blank. I yeah. had so much stuff running through it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, obviously the big one, Freddy's Dead. I, I was, I hadn't seen it in any interviews anywhere at the at the time of doing it. Were you really conscious or really aware of the fact that it hit you that you know you're one of only two people in the Teen Survivor Club? I mean, there's a lot about that role that really is kind of groundbreaking. Yeah, when an you iconic. Get roles yeah, like that. Then you know? uh, when I was doing it, no, but I uh, I know whenever I got the job, I knew that I was going to be a part of something that was going to be a classic just because of Robert as Freddie. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like Bella Lugosi or anybody like that. You know, I knew that there was going to be a classicness to it. Sure. So, but uh, yeah, you know, and then through the, through the years, even with, through the movie, the novellas and the comic book, Tracy is actually the only surviving teenager through the whole thing. No, oh, through the entire canon. Through the entire I have canon. I have missed some of the printed side yeah. of it, you know. I yes. know in the movies, I think Alice survived, too. Yeah, but. she ends up dying or whatever, and I, I forgot which one it was, but yeah, somebody, some person, you know, a big fan, and told me, yeah, through all the novellas and, and comic books and all that, Tracy's the only one to survive. Dang, I didn't, I didn't dig deep enough. I need so to I think Freddie and I need a, a match. Oh, God. <laughs> Man, how cool would that be? That would be awesome. And you get to, I mean, it, it, in a lot of your career has been really, you know, Robert england has been really yeah, big in that. Mm -hmm. You know, 976 Evil, which, oh, so, so criminally underrated. I mean. I agree. How big has Robert been to your career? He's oh, I know. He's pretty special. Also, he did, you know, the Nightmare series, uh, the yeah. episode that yeah, he yeah. directed. I mean, I'm sure he directed more episodes, but I, I did that as well. So that's. Very fortunate to work with him three times. Well, then so. we, yeah, I think we, we could milk a fourth out of that. Yeah, right? I think so. I don't know I if, think he's, so. if he's not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, uh, you know, music is, is your first love, and that's, um, but how has time been so far? I mean, I know we're just getting started here, but, you know, with the horror fans here and everything, how's the experience so far? Oh, awesome. No, it's great. I don't really do a lot of these. I Well, Lloyd, it, it's like I did the Frightmare or the Texas Frightmare with him and then this. Yeah. And I think I've done one more, so I don't really do a lot of these. I'm a big fan of him, so. <laughs> True. Lloyd's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, are, on the music side, are y'all getting anything done during the pandemic as far as new stuff? Or are you just we're recording and back and being careful? We're recording. And we actually had a show, what, October 29th at Gas Monkey. We sold it out. So, oh, okay. so we've just been recording a lot. And we were going to put out a full length, but I think we're going to end up like breaking it up and doing like three EPs. And funny enough, it's called Cold War, Cold War Love Stories. And Cold War love yeah. stories. Yeah. Hell of a title. I know. I like yeah. that. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, we're having fun. Just, you know. And also, through all of this stuff that's going on, I've been fortunate enough to have a job. So oh, for sure. I've been, like, working as much as I possibly can. So between that and the band and everything, it's it's been a busy time. <laughs> Yeah, very you, grateful. I didn't. I didn't expect 2020 to be this busy either. When everything right? shut down, and here the workload's been twice as big, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, for the fans that may not know, can you can you tell us a little bit about your band and everything? I know. 
Uh, I've heard the term like glitter punk, and I was trying to figure out exactly. Yeah, I mean it is. It, it, that's just a moniker like the English gave us in one of the reviews, so we sort of like hung on to that. But uh, it's scary cherry and the bang bangs. It's just sort of like good old rock and roll, and like I'm not like a typical girl. The punk comes from like on stage because there's just a real rawness. Yeah. You know, very energetic and raw, and whatever happens in the moment goes. Uh, but it's just good old rock and roll. You know, it's sort of like I'm a female Bon Scott, if that makes sense. <laughs> I kind of want to sound like a girl. I want to sound like Bon Scott or, you know, some great, like, rock and roll guy. Yeah. So, but we have a blast. And it's uh, a lot of throwback to, like, the 70s glitter era, you know, like David Bowie, Alice Cooper, all that. We've just sort of, like, taken what's inspired us yeah. as people and musicians and just vomited it into something that we, we create, if that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, every artist yeah. is a thief, pretty much, because you're inspired by different things, and then you take it in, and then you regurgitate it out to how it affects you. So that's sort of like sure, what, how yeah. our music is, because a lot of people go, well, that reminds me of this, but not really, but then it kind of reminds me of this. I'm like, okay, then we're doing our job of getting it out, because yeah. that's what's inspired us. Yeah, that means you're getting it right. I mean, it's yeah. not, it, I think people take that in the wrong context sometimes. It's not ripping people off. It's... No. You can call it paying homage or just being influenced. Yeah. But, you know, that's yeah. where the sound comes from. Yeah. You know? So when you say like Bowie and Alice Cooper, it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I love the presentation because I was checking out some of it last night and I'm a big punk guy. So, yeah. Was, you know, there's some punk elements to it and it's yeah. more like the attitude. It's not like the, you know, fast because we're very melodic. Yeah. But there's just a punk attitude, I think, because I kind of have that and a couple other people in the band have that. And the band was, Born out of roller derby, so that should tell you something. Oh, you know? yeah, you, you, you do the roller derby and all <laughs> I that. I did, too. I did, yeah. I did the roller derby, I was quite good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a national champion speed skater growing up, so. Oh, damn, okay. So I ended up being like the captain coach on the travel team whenever I played roller derby. I did that for five years, and then the band just got so busy that I had to like give one up and. I love music, so... Find the balance, yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's a cool world to step back into, though. Yeah. And, you yeah. know? Yeah. I yeah. guess over time, you get to see how, like, influential that character is. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, even in uh, 976 Evil, that yeah, your characters generally are badass chicks. But that's... It comes from a time when there weren't badass chicks, especially yeah. in horror. So... Yeah. That's a pretty cool staying legacy to be one of the groundbreakers because like seemingly all the chicks in horror they're, are they're, badass ah, now. You know, yeah. now now it's like the Before, era of the they were victims chick. and tracy definitely was not a victim no not in any way shape yeah. or form didn't want Susie to be a victim in 976 evil but you know the tarantulas got the best ever <laughs> those were those were real i yes, assume at the time yes, it wasn't any, it was horrible yeah. that was just horrible i'm i'm phobic of anything that that crawls or flies so yeah I'm, i am i'm phobic of spiders but i got to tell you having a tarantula crawl on you what is it aversion therapy or where mm -hmm. they just throw you into it uh I can deal with spiders. I mean, if they start getting about that big, I can't. But, yeah, that was, like, really <laughs> good aversion therapy, I guess. And we lost one of the spiders in the house that they were they rented to. Uh... So now they probably got generations living in their house. <laughs> and don't even know it. I like it. I yeah. like it. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. So beautiful. So, yeah. I've actually run out of stuff. I didn't know I was going to get this much time with you. I, uh... <laughs> I was well, let me ask you about you. Here. So you're okay. from North Carolina, South Carolina? South Carolina. A mountain boy? Yeah, Clemson, college town. Okay, cool. So how long have you been in Texas for? Since 2005. What brought you here? Uh, my daughter was born and I needed to work. There you go. <laughs> Literally. There you go. She lived her first year in Carolina and there were just no jobs. Yeah. So all of my wife's family is out here. And they said, move to Texas. There's oh, jobs. awesome. Yeah. And there's an absolutely ridiculous amount of jobs out here. So. And the cost of living is amazing, too. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, I'm going nowhere else. So we'll spend the rest of my life in Texas. We're about, sorry, y'all. Uh, about a mile and a half down the road. Oh, cool. This is such a, I've never been out this way. This is amazing. And you know, it's, it's developing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this area is growing at an absolutely ridiculous It's crazy pace. from like where I 
what with Tog or whatever, mm -hmm. and then driving out this way of just watching how it's just all it's everything is just like growing together. It's crazy. Tons of housing developments uh -huh. popping up and everything. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a busy area, but luckily yeah. this fell into my lap. I kind of met Lloyd, and it was like, hey, we live two miles apart from each other, and I'm Let's opening a store in between our two houses, and I was like, oh, it's on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. So, so what got you into horror? It really just always been a nutty ass horror fan <laughs> from, the, from the time I was I was the little kid that was watching movies like The Exorcist at oh, six yeah. seven years old and you know I'm a writer too I write short fiction and reviews for different websites oh really cool so the interviewing arm of it just popped up one day like hey do you want to interview this person I said well I don't know if I'll be any good at it but let me give it a shot you're I doing was, a great job you're I good was, at it I appreciate it I was three or four years ago so I guess you somewhat hone your craft after yeah. a while but yeah that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell, I guess. What was your What was your favorite horror film of all time? Dawn yeah. of the Dead. Yeah, the seventy eight version, absolutely. Your nothing, worst. Nothing beats that for me. God, it, you know, it's so hard. I love the really, sh really shitty movies too. So it's kind of hard to say worst in a way that like bothered me. I guess for just crap value. Yeah, that you just didn't like Troll like, Two. Yeah, Troll Two. Overdrive question. for me. Maximum overdrive. Yeah. I ended up getting getting up and leaving. I'm like, I can't, I can't take this. I just, I don't get it. Uh, it, it I love maximum overdrive personally, <laughs> but it We're shows fight over this. <laughs> <laughs> it shows in the movie that it was directed by somebody who was basically not living on this planet at the time. Because you know that whole story with Stephen King is real famous. He hardly remembers, yeah. you know, making the movie. Yeah. And that was when he was all addicted and everything. So it makes for a hell of an interesting watch to go, yeah, he was whacked out of his gourd when he made this uh -huh. movie. Because it's so off the rails. But yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's that off the rails quality. I'm always drawn to yeah. those. Yeah, like a train wreck. Oh, yeah. You're like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta watch it. That's like me in, in Spanish soap operas. I'll turn it on and I'm just trying... I'm like, what are they saying? What are they doing? I just, I got to watch them. It's so weird. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that. I've definitely found myself sitting around a little baked going, why am I watching Spanish so much? <laughs> right? Because I don't speak Spanish. I don't but either. They're, yeah, yeah they're, they're fascinating to watch yeah. nonetheless. <laughs> or like if you're watching something bad, like I'll be watching, I'll be in a movie and it's bad and they're like, come on. I'm like, I have put time and energy into watching this film. I'm going to see it through. Oh, for sure. Well, there's, there's a threshold point. Yeah. In a crappy film where it's like you either walk out before that or once you've committed that much time to it. Yeah. No, you're not getting my ass out of the seat. I'm There's gonna, that moment. If I'm gonna bitch about it later, I wanna be able to say I've seen the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Here's my vitriol and you know, then lay into it. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately I like all the crappy ones. So. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and watch uh, Maximum Overdrive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and like, be your viewing when you get home tonight. Yeah, and like look at it from the perspective of what you were talking about. I'm, I may have to give that a try and go. Okay, I, I'm seeing it from a different area. Uh, maybe I can make it through the film. <laughs> so, or maybe I'll get to that point of going. I've invested way too much time. I'm gonna go with it for sure. So. Yeah. But it's funny because doing so many reviews, because I'm like a hardcore workaholic. I think I've probably done upwards of 100 this year, not including wow. the interviews. And working a 40-hour-a-week job. Holy shit. I don't know. My motor doesn't stop. But I watch a lot of bad ones, too, as a result. But my kind of philosophy is, even if it's the shittiest movie in the world, a lot of people put effort and time yeah, to get together make this movie. So it's not my place to crap on what you've made. Yeah. I mean, I can look at the technical aspects of it and go, this didn't work, this didn't work. But the effort, the energy, the performances, I always try to find something good. Even okay. in the worst movies, like, okay, the movie was terrible. But, but the lighting was awesome. Or Leslie killed it. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. this movie's awful, but There's she be... straight kicked ass. So you're the, you're the glass half full. Oh, for sure. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. At least with horror, I might not have as much patience for other genres. I do a lot of indie stuff on my personal site, and sometimes I get those weird indie movies where they just frustrate me. And I'm like, what the hell are you even trying to say here with this right. movie? It was like an hour-long music video or something. So. <laughs> that made no sense. Yeah. But yeah, a little different perspective maybe with that maximum. Yeah, overdrive. yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> thank you for like pointing me in the right direction. That's cool. No problem. Well, thank you for taking the time and 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 turning the tables on me. That was a uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's really what it's all about, right? It's all <laughs> yes, about human connection. That's, Getting to know one another. That's the fun of doing this is being able to get back together and 
it's just good to be around people and yeah our people so to yeah. speak you know the horror community is a unique one like that well, it's a kick-ass community knit. yeah it's like yeah. Lloyd. Lloyd was telling me a story about the con where he was saying that the hotels love the con but hate the business people because the business people trash it out, destroy rooms, get way too drunk, and they're like the horror fans. They clean up after themselves. Yeah. They're respectful. They, you know, everything that nice. people might think we're not. And it's like yeah. no, people in the horror community are really nice and really accepting and really cool. Yeah. You know, and respectful of people. And when you can be surrounded by your tribe. Yeah. It's always nice. Yeah, so, it is. Yeah, this is a cool Especially experience. during this time, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good thing you're inside, not in the tent, though. It's a little cold outside. <laughs> I may have to step outside, though. I like the cold. <laughs> I hear you. I'm, I'm weird. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it.